Welcome everyone to our new video. In this video, we're going to go over mudding. Uh, if you don't know how to mud, uh, I do suggest you watch uh, a professional do it. However, uh, in my video, we're just going to kind of talk about what I did, uh, what worked, what didn't work, and then kind of what tools I used. So this was cool. Um, this was a spackle blade that we bought that actually curves um, for you to be able to scoop uh, your mud, uh, which helped out a lot because in the beginning we were using the square one, uh, which didn't help us at all when we had to get around the curves. So this is a trowel. I've been using it as my spackle board. I use it because it's small. Uh, this one here, my husband uses. So this is like the proper one that you should be using. However, it's too heavy for me. Uh, it's too big, it's too wide, so uh, it doesn't help me at all. However, my husband loves that one, so um, he continues to use it. Use it. So I use the, the trowel instead. Um, I think it's small. It's what I need. Even if I need to go in to go get more mud, um, I'll do that. Uh, because when you're actually mudding, you'll, you'll kind of notice that you will get tired uh, just from holding it. So, um, I mean, if you're a professional, of course you would use the proper one. And you would probably go a lot faster than I do. But that's what I use. And I did about two, two and a half scoops on that. Um, I think that's perfect, especially when you're doing your first layer. Um, you kind of want to test it out too. You don't want your mud to dry. So make sure that you are closing your lid when you get your mud. So I'm using the longer blade here to actually put the mud on to the seam. And that is because I need a bigger surface because relatively you just, you know, putting it onto the seam there. So you want as much surface as you can and be generous with it. Put a lot of mud. Um, that was the issue that I had with the first room uh, because I really didn't know all, uh, anything about mudding. So I noticed that the less mud I had on there the greater the chance is for that tape to actually lift and that is something that you definitely don't want when you're mudding uh, because you'll notice that when you start painting of your tape actually lifting from the seam so put as much as you can be like i said be generous with it uh, don't think you're putting too much because when you put your tape, and you'll see that uh, in a little bit, you're going to take all of that out anyway. When you start scraping uh, all the mud on and off of the tape. Okay, so put as much as you can. And I kind of just smushed it down here. Um, I didn't have to do that, but I, I just do that anyway just to make sure that it goes into the seam. And actually mudding became very like relaxing to me. Uh, put your headphones in and just go to town. Because the more you do it, um, the better you'll get at it. I'm I'm hopeful that by the time I do the living room and kitchen, I'll be uh, somewhat a professional at it. All right, so I use the smaller blade that you you guys usually see at Home Depot. This is the typical smaller blade. Uh, here is the tape. So when it's called taping, uh, you're probably thinking that it's sticky. It is not. It literally is just like paper. And it comes with the uh, bifold there 
so it's easier for, for you to actually fold the paper. So that's what you want to do when you get your tape. You want to fold it. All right. And then you want to find where that seam is at the top. Um, of course, when you're mudding, you, you kind of lose where your seam is. But I did a little scrape there at the top so I know where the seam is. Okay. So here's the thing. A professional would not do this. You see how I'm just going like little by little, just trying to make sure I get it in the seam. Um, if you're a professional, I've seen it in other videos, they've kind of just put the tape there and then just started scraping down. So you want to go down, um, don't go up, um, and you probably will see me do that. Uh, yeah, don't go up, you want to go down. Because when you go up, uh, the tape will slide, uh, which, you know, I know better to not go up, but sorry, in this video you will see that. So, this thing that I'm doing here, you don't have to do that. That's just me. I, get, I got paranoid after the first room I did, um, as far as the tape lifting. So, that's just me going down in the middle just to make sure I'm in the seam. I just want to make sure that it's in there and we're good to go. All right, so back to my trowel. And we're going to scrape. And like I said, you do want to start at the top and then you're gonna smooth it down. <clears throat> okay, so this was the only video, unfortunately, that I took of that day. So I learned from my mistakes. All right, so here you're gonna see me absolutely do what I told you not to do. Because it did move a few times. And like I said, unfortunately, this is the only video I took that day. So I'm gonna tell you guys the right way to do it. So when you put your tape down, what do you wanna do is start in the middle. So hold your trowel in the middle of your tape and then go down. So if that doesn't make sense, hopefully uh, when I do the living room and kitchen, uh, I'll actually do a proper video of um, how to actually do it. So what do you wanna do actually is start in the middle, go down, smooth it out, and take out as much mud as you can. And I know that doesn't sound like, um, sound right. I mean, you guys are probably thinking like, well, why would I put all that mud there and then take it all out? Because what you want to do is have a seamless transition. You don't want it to look lumpy. You don't want so much mud in there that it takes long to dry as well. Because you're going to actually do three layers of this. So the last thing you want to do is to have it bumpy and then have to do a lot of sanding. So, but you do want to put a lot in the beginning because like I said, you want to make sure that tape is nice and saturated. And that's the goal. You want your tape saturated with the mud. So, <clears throat> even though I'm going from you know, down to up instead of up to down. Um, this is basically what you wanna do. You wanna put pressure with your blade and smooth it out and take out all that mud you just put on there. All right. So usually um, when I see video, YouTube videos of a professional do it, they will put more mud onto the tape on top of the tape before scraping it which is the correct way to do it um but this actually worked better for me just in the sense of because i was using the trowel so there's not enough room for me to scrape a lot of mud on and i didn't have to keep going back and forth and you know dumping the mud back into the bucket and all of that so this is the way that i did it However, like I said, 
what I've seen is they will actually put mud on top of the tape and then scrape it. All right, so you can see at the top there how it's scrunched up. Uh, that is what you wanna avoid. Um, that's why I say go down to bottom instead of bottom to top. Um, but if I had done it correctly the first time, which was start halfway, uh, it would have been better. But you could see there, I was trying to smooth it out at the end. All right, so once you did all your scraping, get a little uh, sponge and just make it like damp. And this actually helped out a lot. Um, I didn't have to go on it uh, as much as I did here in this video. You really do only have to just go over it once. And that's just to smooth it out. That's just to make it um, where the transition kind of looks smooth and you don't have to actually sand so much before you do the next layer. All right, so this is me in this frame doing the window. Um, I'll actually have a, a closer up of me doing the window as well. So I'll kind of go over that um, when we get to that frame. However, um, I did kind of just want you guys to see how I did the window from afar. You really kind of just want to put... I did still put a lot. However, I used the smaller blade to do it. Um, I didn't do that big uh, blade, the longer one. Um, I could have, um, but it was more awkward for me to do it that way. Um, I thought it was better for me to use the smaller blade. And then that's me tape putting the tape on. It goes, um, <clears throat> it goes on the kind of the same way. Uh, however, because you're just doing the window, you're not doing like a long seam. Um, you just want to put it on there nicely and then put the mud over top of it. Um, I also want to note uh, in this video as well, when you're cutting the tape, it does have to be straight, straight and a clean cut. So make sure you have a blade to cut it. Don't cut it with your, um, you know, just by ripping it. You don't want to do that because then you'll actually have lines when you, you'll notice that when you start to um, sand it out. Uh, there will be lines there because your tape wasn't uh, cut evenly. Okay, so here's the close-up of me doing the window. So you can see there's um, a plastic rim all around there. And that's what you want to put on before you, you know, start mudding. Um, you don't want to do that without it. Uh, that is because it's going to make it a lot easier and a lot smoother when you're doing the windows. So all I did was really I just uh, screwed, put screws. I just put screws into the plastic uh, and then it holds it there. So you can see um, I'm trying to angle it and that's what you want to do when you're doing the window. Um, because this is how it's going to be a smooth transition from the wall to the uh, the trim of the window here so you want to put it on somewhat of an angle and put more mud on the top versus the bottom and then smooth it out so I'm nowhere near a professional so um, but I hope you learned something from my video if not what to do at least what not to do <laughs> so um, but this is a learning experience for myself as well um, it's all trial and error. It really is. Um, like I said in our first video, we are not professionals. We look at YouTube videos like you guys, um, you know, to get tips and how to do this right. Um, I think the room turned out great. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, and just to let you guys know as well that the videos that we upload are like back videos. Um, and we do that because we, I want to be able to break down the videos so that you guys actually see the process of what we're doing and not just, you know, a five-minute video of, like, start to finish. 
um, because it it's not like that in real life. You know, it um, it isn't. It's hard work. Uh, it's tedious. Um, it's a learning experience, uh, definitely. And I, I'm hoping that in the you know while we're finishing up this whole mobile home, that we will get better and better at it, and then we could possibly like purchase more mobile homes and renovate more mobile homes and actually, you know, make a business out of it. Um, you know, fingers crossed, but thank you for watching our video. We appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you next time.